afternoon or good evening, wherever you may be. Uh, what's going on, everybody? Hopefully you're all doing well. We got a special guest here tonight. We got Rob from Pinstripe Chronicles Podcast. I'm sure you've all seen him. I'm sure you all love him in the in, in the chat, in the conversation. So what's going on, Rob? How you feeling? I'm doing good. It's a good Sunday. It's up to everybody in the chat. Good to see some familiar names out there. Donnie, Steven, FL Diver, Caputo's in here. Good to see everybody from the Chronicles that they pop in yeah. on our show. They're popping in here. Caputo's already doing his thing before we even started. And thanks for having me on, man. This is going to be fun. Yeah, absolutely, man. Thanks for coming on. You know, I know you've been talking Yankees prospects with uh, with Donald and Tats, and I know you've been really into it. So I want to get your thoughts. You know, who, what names are sticking out? Who do you want to see more of? I mean, talk to us, man. Well, the obvious one is – Probably the untouchable one at this point, right, Spencer Jones? Um, That's right. <laughs> but I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, we'll save, we'll save the Spencer Jones talk because that, I know we all want to hear about him. But man, my favorite prospect right now, at least pitching wise, has to be Selvage. It's been Brock Selvage for quite some time. What's up, Garcia? Cold Italian Pizza. That's Jonathan. Can't, can't forget Jonathan. That's the greatest name. Cold, Cold Italian, Italian pizza. pizza, dude. I mean, come on. It just hits. Come hey. on. <laughs> but. <laughs> No, Selvage is probably my favorite pitching prospect because I just I see like a, a really, really good starter in him. And lefty, he's only 21. He's got a lot of things that he's already good at right now. The velo's at a good spot. Um, his cutter's moving like crazy. Lane's probably my second, Donnie. I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. I, I like lefties because we've seen teams develop right-handed pitching like crazy. But if you yeah. can develop a good lefty, then you've got something special there. And I just I see Selvage improving that walk rate from last year or last year he improved his walk rate. The command's getting better. The velo's there. He's got good mix of pitches, and he looked really good yesterday in that spring breakout game. So right now he's my he's my favorite guy. But Lalane is also right there too. I love those lefties, and I think those two are going to be staples in our rotation in the next few years for sure. Yeah. So as far as Selvage goes, what like what do you see from him? Do you see him getting called up? Uh, in the near future, or is he still far out? Maybe another year at the at like the minimum. You know, like mm -hmm. I, I think he's going to be a fast riser. A lot of people seem to think he's going to be taking that step up to Double A this year, and then eventually he'll take a quick track to Triple A. I, I see at at this time next year, I think we'll be talking about him the way we're talking about Chase Hampton right now, as that guy that's got the potential, that's got the stuff, and he's going to make a he's going to make some noise. A lot of people think Hampton will be ready this year, and which is certainly possible. I think we'll be talking about Selvage in that same light next season. Okay, so you you think he'll be brought up next season, or you still think he'll be? Maybe, maybe, maybe like okay. mid season, depending on how quickly he adjusts to the next level, because he still has to get above high A at this point. But right. he should be getting his way to Double A this year, and would not surprise me about next year if he's seen Triple A, gets a few starts there, and. Maybe not like a midseason call up or even September for Selvage, but next year I think would be like the earliest you'd see him. But I wouldn't put any money on that or anything. I still think 2026 most likely for Selvage, but I think he's going to be a quick riser. He'll only be 23 at that point, so yeah. he's got plenty of time. Yeah, still super young. Does he remind you of anybody as far as uh, current pitchers go or or past? Or is he just his own guy? I feel like he's his own guy. You know, like I heard Lalane is getting a lot of uh, comparisons to Johnson because of his height and the, like the heat he throws, and he's got great command. But I just, I just see Selvage as like just an angry pitcher sometimes. Like he, you saw that that emotion he was showing yesterday when he got that big out. Mm -hmm. He's kind of got that bulldog mentality that we talk about with Hampton, but he's got it from the left side. And I think that 2021 draft class that he was a part of is going to be special. And I think he's going to be the best one of it. And Will Warren was in that class too. So I, I see a lot of potential in him. Yeah, no doubt. And, you know, as far as his pitches go, what, what, what do you think? Do you, do you like his sequences? Do you like how those pitches are coming out? Um, the spin rate's good. Spin rate, yeah. The spin mm -hmm. rate, I think on his curveball yesterday was like, it's like over three K, you know, it, it was, it was nuts. So the RPMs on that was, was, was insane. I think he's really starting to get a good feel for that cutter, which is definitely a good sign. Um, if he's not able to reach like triple digits, which he doesn't have to, but he was touching 95. 
you know, and at 21 years old, that's a good sign. You're hitting 95 miles an hour. You're getting some good movement on that cutter. Um, that's a good sign. And the fact that his, his command has gotten better, you know, mm-hmm. Lonnie's already there, but Selvage needs to work on that command a little bit more. And it's, it's already gotten better from last season. So I, that's why I think he's going to start rising up those ranks quickly. And I think he's, he's got all the tools to be really, really good. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. I, you know, I, I heard a lot about him, you know, I heard a lot about him and I liked, I liked some of the stuff that I saw from him. I've seen some highlights from him. You know, I know, um, you know, you, you're, you obviously like him. I know guys like Dane, Dane Huber like him. Um, I've heard it from some of the other content creators and Donnie, I meant I meant to talk about this, but Lalane is not going to start over Nestor. Sorry, <laughs> a little too early, a little too early. But um, yeah, Lalane is another is another name that's been mentioned a lot. But what do you what are your thoughts on him? How, how do you compare him to Selvage? You know, he's another lefty pitcher, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, being Big. compared to like Randy Johnson, yeah. <laughs> that that those put some expectations on the kid. I know, that. Donnie. I know. Yeah, <laughs> we would hope so, Donnie. We hope yeah. that was a yeah, joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, we know you were joking, dude. But we just wanted to give you a hard time. But I, I like that they let Selvage go four, and then Lalane go the final two innings yesterday. I like that they let. It was kind of. I wanted to see a little bit of uh, Hampton, but we've already seen him in the spring, and I wanted to see Lagrange as, as well, but. No, not this year. Not, not this year, yeah. Jonathan. Yeah, he hasn't made above uh, single A yet. But once he, I think next year will be the earliest you see him. But I still don't think it will be next year. Um, but Lalane, the the command is what's so impressive to me because you we've seen guys hit triple digits all the time now. They could be sixteen years old throwing ninety five miles an hour, and it wouldn't surprise you. But he's nineteen and he has got excellent command already. And that's what every every scout says about him is his command is really good. Command is really freaking good for a kid that young. Plus the the velocity he's got under his belt already. He's he's like what six foot seven? Like he's he's ridiculous. Yeah, so like that, yeah. I think he's I think he's going to be really really good too, and that's why the those are the two guys I'm really like. I think they're going to be staples because it's hard to find good lefties, and either you trade them or you use them as part of your rotation. Now our issue for the Yankees has always been developing guys when they get here. Hopefully those are two guys that we can develop when they get here. Yeah. And yes. the answer to the question is six, seven, six foot seven for Lalani. Yes. And the, uh, there was a question here. What are the chance Brock was being showcased yesterday? I guess what, I guess what, are, what are you trying to ask there? I felt ever. I'm just trying to understand a question of being showcased in, in for other teams or, or, uh, or preview. I mean, I'm, I'm I don't think to... they would have started him in the breakout game if they planned on trading him. You know, yeah, I would hope not. I no, I, I would, I would, I would hope not either. But um, yeah, and and you know, to your point, man, I I really do like lefty pitchers, and I, I feel like they're you know a, a dime. You know, they're they're a rare they're a rarity. And as far as developing players, I I think um, yeah, he's saying going four innings for trade bait. I know, but. Yeah, what I what I was gonna what I was gonna say was I, I think the Yankees right now, uh, compared to the past, I think they're doing a better job of developing players in the minor leagues, um, as opposed to like you mentioned, them bring brought up in the majors and developing them during the, during the major league time. And I don't think that's exactly smart because they're they're not they're not where they need to be at that point. At that point, they're brought up too early, and then their their talents are kind of wasted at that point, and then their value goes down. And unfortunately we've seen that from the past, but I think w- when it comes to player development though, I think they're doing a much better job with it. So hopefully it, it stays that way, but how do you, do you see it that way? They have to let these guys be themselves when they get here. What what got you here? It needs to be what they're doing when you get here. Cause how many times do we see it with the, with the hitters, they come up and, oh, with, with Peraza, get rid of the leg kick, and then they brought it back. Or th- changing little things in the swing, like Volpe went going to that uppercut swing more often last year, which was certainly annoying. But for these pitchers, like it, it, we haven't been able to get one that – yeah, I, I know. I, I want a Cabrera, too. But we, <laughs> we all wanted Cabrera. Uh, it's unfortunate <laughs> that it didn't work out. but um, He's hurt, so there is that. Uh, 
Yeah, along, I mean, I'm not going to be happy Along with Yuri that. Perez, by the way. Yeah, the Marlins are hurt right now, man. And yeah, so. maybe they should have traded somebody beforehand. I don't know, but it, it, it does suck for them because those are two arms that were uh, – that were really that were really special that they could have moved from. Um, not not Perez, but Cabrera is a guy they probably could have gotten a decent return from. Anyway, and yeah, yeah. They, go ahead. Go ahead. The development has been a lot better, and I'm hoping that they learn their lesson from their past mistakes. When they when they have a kid that comes up doing really well in the minors, they bring him here and they see what worked for him, and they try to teach him a few other things like, hey try this, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's what I'm trying to say. Cause a lot of the right. times they'll call up somebody and be like, Oh, throw your, throw this cutter more, even though he doesn't need to throw a cutter. The well, good thing is Selvage already does that. So we won't have to have Matt Blake teach him a cutter. And that's always a good sign. I just don't want them to try to tinker with things that don't need to be tinkered with. Cause obviously whatever gets you to the show is what gets you to the show. There's no need to really adjust things that aren't broken. Now, if the guy's got command issues, then by all means, try to adjust. But if a guy like Lalani, let's say, or well, you Selvage have been talking about him. If Selvage yep. comes up, uh, let's say 2026 and he's got really good numbers in AAA, and he doesn't have a lot of command issues and the walk issues are down. They don't need to be like, Oh, Hey, you're, you're struggling a little bit here with command. Start throwing a little more with, with, you know, try throwing a two seam or something like that. Little things like that, that they've done with other pitchers in the past. That's why we haven't been able to really, develop starting pitching at this level the development's great in the minors it's crap at the major league level because we've only yeah. developed what like maybe two that be that would be Seve and montgomery really those are the right. only two that we've developed at the major league level in the last maybe 10 years or so so something's got to change and i'm hoping that they've learned from their past mistakes because i don't want to see this crop of prospects we have get ruined yeah, right, right. I no, I I hear you, man. And that was one of the most frustrating things uh, from the Yankees of them. You know, they have the players, right? They have a lot of potential, but the development and where how they develop these guys just was not working. And you know, I don't I don't know why, but it some there's somewhere in the system. I don't know who makes the calls down there, but it, it just wasn't working out. And you know, I wanted to bring up Caputo's comment here, right? You know, he brings up the Dodgers, Braves, Rays, Houston, and the Orioles having better farm systems than the Yankees. I mean, look, as far as – I'll admit this. Look, the Dodgers, Braves, Houston, and Baltimore, I mean, they're all – these teams are great at building talent. I, I, I will have to say they they um, they um they do a good job of that. But how do you, how do you think the Yankees compare, you know, do you, uh, as far as – you know, are they as good or can they be as good as these guys in developing players? Not right now. Um, Not right now, yeah. No, a lot – these teams, especially like Baltimore, a lot of their guys are going to be ready within the next year. Um, a lot of the Yankees guys are like a good two, three years away. A lot of our best talent is in the FCL, and they'll be in single A, and then eventually the next couple of years they'll they'll be in the conversation to be in the majors, but – that's that I wouldn't say it's the issue. That's the Yankees farm system right now. They have some good talent in the in triple A and double A. Like we know Warren, Beater, the mm -hmm. names that we all know, like Vivas and them guys, but most of our like elite talent are really, really good talents in the FCL right now. And within the next couple of years, they're gonna be they're gonna be better. And they'll probably the Yankees will probably be a top five farm system. I still think they should be one right now, but the fact that they're top seven in some sites, but Pipeline has it's like 11th, maybe a little bit of a stretch, but um, I think the next couple of years we'll, we'll see this top, uh, top five farm system for sure because these kids in the FCL, we saw a lot of them yesterday, and they, they are good. And this this FCL team is disgustingly talented, and it's it's going to be even better in the next couple of years. So I think where we are now is there. No doubt. And, and the Yankees farm system, what, they're ranked 11th, if I'm not mistaken? I think it was 11th in, in pipeline, but baseball America had a seventh, I think. And the same goes for ESPN. I think they were, okay. they were like top seven or top eight on those two sites, but pipelines always kind of. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I hear, you know, I've, I've, um, I've learned that ESPN and baseball America, those are probably two uh, sources 
that uh, you know that are tr- you know trustworthy. Uh, so you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind. You know, I I, I value their opinions for sure. And uh, Zachary Fluster, so you guys are saying I would, Zach, I wouldn't give up Spencer Jones for C. Some fans would. I don't. I I wouldn't. That's just me though. But we'll we'll He's, talk. About I wouldn't Spencer. have given up for Cease, No. For, for no, Burns, not for, yes. Not for Cease, yeah. No. Yeah. See, and that's my 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 thing with Burns, and I've and I've said this many times. I would have done it for like two or three years of control. Um, if 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 he had two or three more years, I'd be like, you know what, let's do it. But for one year, eh, I don't know. <laughs> I I see that, but I'm like, I think the yeah. circumstance that everyone's kind of talking about is like, this is you have to win this year, and mm-hmm. having Corbin Burns right now with Garrett Cole would be we wouldn't be worrying about this pitching too much right now, even without Cole. They no kind of need no that, that second ace. I'm hoping Rodon could be that guy, but I, I would really like to have Corbin Burns right now, I'll tell you. And I love what Spencer Jones is doing, but, man, we, we could have used the Corbin Burns right now, especially with Cole's injury. Yeah, no, nah, no doubt, no doubt. Look, I'm not, I'm not opposed to Corbin Burns. I, I think my, my, biggest thing, my biggest thing was just um, – you know, getting him for only a year because it was the same thing with Soto. I know what we were getting with Soto, but it's Juan Soto. So, you know, the Yankees knew what kind of risk they were taking with with him being a one year rental. But I'm going to enjoy it for the moment. You know, I'm going to enjoy this one year with Juan Soto. But um, I, I think just having two one year rentals, it's it's um, I don't know. It's 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 a lot to deal with, you know, but they get they get paid to deal with that type of stuff. <laughs> so, um. <laughs> But what other uh, prospects, man? I, we talked about Selvish, Lalane. What other names are uh, uh, Caleb Durbin? He's another name that's been talked about. I'm kind of surprised that they put him in the outfield because he's never played there. And he's always he's an been infielder, an infielder. Right? Yeah, he's yeah. like second base, third base type of uh, okay. shortstop. Um, one of the 18 that we have. But I'm surprised they put him in the outfield. I think he had an error today, actually. Um, I don't know why they're doing that, but. He's he's turned some he's turned some heads he's raised some eyebrows in, in camp this year so he's a guy that people are talking about I don't know if he's going to be anything for this team um, Vivas I agree Aiden I think Vivas is a guy that mm-hmm. I, I really am excited about another lefty had a really good game yesterday but the fact what really caught my eye was they put Lombard at second and Vivas at third yesterday which shocked me because I didn't think Vivas had the arm to play third but clearly the Yankees don't seem to think that because they stuck him over there. So maybe they have some plans for Vivas to be the third baseman. Uh, I wouldn't put money on that, but Vivas is the most ready of those infielders, though. You know, talking sure. about him and Serna, um, Arias sure. Lombard. Yeah. yeah, I think Vivas will be ready by next year. Vivas, yeah, I'm. I I was excited to see him. You know, I, I liked him a lot in some of the games that he played. He played very well. Uh, I, I, with him playing third base, can you see the Yankees try to make him like a utility guy if they put him at third? I know that's not his primary spot, but. It depends on what happens with Peraza when he gets healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, and also what they do with Torres. Do they move Torres? Do they resign him? If he has a great year, I couldn't see them letting him just walk. So it, it all depends on what, what they have, what happens with Glaber Torres, and yeah, it then does also DJ because he apparently he's day to day right now. So, I mean, I don't know what the heck we're doing or what's going to happen there. Uh, I think Vivas is the next man up, honestly, because Peraza's hurt. We don't really have, I wouldn't trust Cabrera at this point. Vivas could be called up earlier than expected, but he certainly needs a little more work. Um, but maybe, maybe Vivas turns into that utility player if they do decide to move on from. Uh, Torres and maybe Peraza takes over at second. I don't want them to have two utility prospects, so that's for sure. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, Peraza. You know, I wanted I wanted to talk about him a little bit. I, you know, it's unfortunate. You know, I don't like the way the Yankees have treated him. I don't like the way they have utilized him. You know, this whole thing with him. You know, bring, him being brought up sent back down, being brought up, being sent back down. It, it it really, you know, there's so much inconsistency with him. We're, we haven't really seen him play. Not really, you know, in a, not in a full season. We've gotten 
to see him play, just not, not you know, not in a full season. But at this point, he's he's out for the moment because of a shoulder injury. So what happens now? You know, does he start at triple a or what you know he's out of or he has one option left right and yeah yeah so what what happened what happens to peraza now what do you what do you think do you do you think he gets traded or do you do you think the yankees bring him up and play him like where do you play him i guess that's the that's the other question so i wish i knew i yeah, yeah. i don't think the no, yankees man. know you know yeah, that's the problem yeah. go ahead um, I, I wish I knew. I, I really, I really, really wish I knew what the heck they were thinking there. Cause the kid came up, he played a, a playoff game. He hit 300 his first, you know, in the two week stretch that he was there in, in 2022. And then he lost the shortstop job, but why he didn't get the job over Donaldson, I won't get, he should have been starting a third. <laughs> yeah. And then he, and Donaldson gets hurt. They still they call him up, they play him, and he goes on a hitting streak, and they sit him, and then he gets hurt, and then he comes back, and then Judge got came back, so they sent him down. No prospect, because let's not forget he's only twenty three. It's not like he's twenty five, and he was a top three prospect. They missed opportunities to trade him. They could have gotten a lot for him if they traded him last season. If they just kept him in the minors. And gave this and gave the job to Volpe. He should have been on the block immediately. See what you can get for him, whether it be a major league, like maybe use him in a package for an outfielder better than what we had, another starter, whatever it may have been. You could have gotten something for him. They yeah, didn't no. play him when they needed to play him, and they didn't trade him when they needed to trade him. It is such a travesty what they've done to him because he has the tools to be a really good hitter, but they just won't let him. Yeah, and Donnie's right. They could have gotten Cole, but they didn't want to give up Andujar or Chance Adams, and I think and Clint Frazier was the other player. Yeah, and so let me ask you this then, with with, with Peraza, because the Yankees they almost had uh, Pablo Lopez from the Marlins when he was playing for the Marlins. Uh, the, the trade almost it almost went down. It was going to be Glaber Torres being traded for Pablo Lopez, and I forget there was one other name. It was talked. It was talked about yesterday when I was on with Tats and um, and Rich Garcia. I forgot the name, but then I guess last minute they asked for um, they asked for Peraza. Then yeah. Cashman said no. Would you have done that at I the mean, time? Yeah, you know, at you the time. Think. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what the Yankees. What up, Brad? They probably had plans. What's up, Brad? I'm pro they, they probably had plans to make Peraza the second baseman. Mm -hmm. you know, that's all they talked about was Volpe and Peraza were the were the future in the middle of the infield. So, I mean, if we can go take a DeLorean back to 2022, you or you make that trade, right? You be like, sure. okay, do it. But I mean, I blame them at the time for not doing it because they thought that Peraza was going to be part of their future. So. But then to do what they did to him, not call him up until September, not use him until the last two weeks, and then not use him after that, it it really doesn't make sense. Like, what did he do wrong for them to sour on him so quickly? Because they refused to trade him for Castillo in any package for Castillo. They refused to trade him in any package for Brian Reynolds. And then they didn't play him. But all he did was play. Like, he did everything asked of him. And... I don't know what soured them on his production because he killed AAA. He was too good for AAA, and they kept him rotting there for, for too long to a point where they called him up, it didn't really, really matter. You know, they called him up too late. So back then I can see why they didn't do it, but maybe in hindsight they should have. Yeah, in hindsight, right? Because, I mean, I wasn't at that time, right, we we're talking a couple of years ago, I wasn't really at for trading Peraza just because of everything I've heard about him. I wanted I wanted to see him play. And he's, you know, it's no disrespect to Anthony Volpe, but he's a better shortstop than Anthony Volpe, you know. But Anthony Volpe just played better than him um, last spring training last year, so that's why Volpe got the job. But um, yeah, with Peraza, I man, he should, like you said, he should have started over Josh Donaldson. That that hmm. was that that should have just happened as soon as Donaldson started playing poorly, which he did. Immediately. <laughs> yeah, I mean, is anybody surprised? Not really. 
But they, they should have just started Peraza right there, have him play third base alongside uh, Volpe. You know, that would have been a pretty solid infield right there, you know, with, with uh, Volpe, uh, Peraza, uh, Torres, Rizzo. Like, you, you could have had those four. For this, I'm talking for like this year. I'm, I'm just yeah. trying to think from, you know, a year ago, jumping into today. And then you could have had DJ just, you know, come off the bench. He could be that utility guy. He can he can play for, uh you know, either for Rizzo or he could play for Torres. I mean, he could play anywhere in the infield. He just doesn't play shortstop. So, I mean, LeMahieu could have been that guy. But, you know, I I don't know. It's frustrating. And I've, I've expressed my frustration a lot. And to Donnie Clark's point, I mean, he, sending sending him up and down probably hurt his self esteem, and it probably did. It probably did. Um, and I'm, I'm that 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 uh, shoulder injury too. I wanted, you know, we'll, we'll, and before we move on, I wanted to touch up on that. I'm wondering because this was something that Brad had asked on I, I, it was on X. He asked if you know if the Yankees knew if he came into spring training with that shoulder injury, if the Yankees knew it, but he just played through it. I mean, it, he did put on a lot of muscle, didn't he? Like he put on some muscle this off. He put on a little, yeah, he, he got a little big. So I'm wondering if that, yeah, yeah you're right, Brad. They have, um, I'm wondering if that had something to do with it. Cause we've seen in the past people put on muscle that don't really need to put on muscle. It affects mm -hmm. them. Like remember when the one year Stanton did yoga, he stayed healthy. Yeah. And then the next year he was back to like, his old just weightlifting self and he got hurt in 2022. And last year he was hurt. Um, I don't know why he put decided to put on, maybe he'd went a little too hard with the weightlifting and one bad throw. Cause he remember he had two errors in his first game and then yeah. he got hurt. So I saw that. maybe it was the off season work. Maybe he went a little too hard on the weights. And then like Garrett Cole said with his injury, he made it went just a little too hard out of the gate and it, it hurt him. So the thing is, he kind of he kind of knew that this may have been his last shot. You know, he had to earn a spot somewhere because even though they announced DJ as the starter, if he would have had a good spring, he would have been he would have been right now. he had been your third baseman because DJ's on the he's not on the IL, but he's day to day. He could have if he had a good spring, he could have put himself in that third base category right now. Oh. So he kind of knew this was his last shot. So maybe he went a little too hard and. We've saw it happen in the past with Zach Britton. He came back from injury uh, and trying to prove something got hurt. So sometimes yeah. you just need to cool off a little bit, relax, know that the first week of spring training is not going to decide anything or the first few days in his matter. So I think maybe he was just trying a little too much to, to earn his way on this team because they, with that fourth option, I was like, they're going to put him in triple a and maybe he had a thought of that too. And, that could have been it. Maybe he was already hurt. Possibly Brad, you know, Brad has a good point because we've seen the Yankees very bad with injuries and the players don't necessarily do a good job relaying that they're hurt as well. So I would hope that's not the case, but it certainly could be. Yeah. I was going to say, cause players have a responsibility to let the, let the staff know that, Hey, something is off. And if you just try to tough it out, I mean, it, it's only going to make matters worse. So you know, maybe with uh, Peraza putting on some of that muscle, it could have affected him. I'm not. I'm not sure, but there, there is. You there is. You have a valid point there. Um, I think with uh, like with John Carlos Stanton, with him slimming down, I think it's going to help him avoid injuries. As far as him hitting better, we'll find out. We'll see. But at least he. At least would you know with Stanton real quick. At least he's running. At least we see him. We see him running. So that, that's a start. Um, but, uh, yep. And, uh, real quick guys. Um, if you haven't yet, uh, please hit that like button. If you are new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button. I'm on the road to 500 subscribers. So I'm not that far away. I'm actually about like 24 away. So, uh, I'm, I'm trying to get there by opening day. So if you could all help me get there, I would greatly appreciate it. And, uh, you guys, Rob Pinstripe Chronicles, you guys hit 600. So we did congratulations on that man thank that's you. that's thank awesome you. that's awesome that's gotta be a good feeling it, it it is we wanted to get to 600 before opening day and we did that with uh about a week to go um yeah. so guys please please go sub up if you yeah. haven't if you haven't subbed to nfe please do this, this guy 
you made your channel like two months ago when you're already nearing 500. So you're, you're blitzing through this thing like crazy. And it's well, it's much deserved. You know, you, yeah, you do the show solo and you're killing it, my dude. So um, oh, please, if you, you have not subbed to him, what are you doing? Sub to him, <laughs> sub, to, <laughs> sub to NFE, sub to Mazza, sub to us at the Pinstripe Chronicles. You can see more of me. You can see NFE in the chat. He's there all the time. So NFE, I, I thank you for the congratulations. I appreciate it. But you're getting to 500 very, very soon, and it's much deserved, my friend. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, no, you, I. it's it's a little overwhelming, honestly, because it's like, whoa, how did this happen? Because I, I literally started this thing December 2nd, 2023. Like I, the date's like in my brain. So, um, you know, the growth has been amazing. So, you know, and I'm just going to continue, man. I'm not, I'm not stopping anytime soon. So <laughs> even if they try to just stop me, it ain't dumb. Uh, pipeline is dumber than it. I lie. <laughs> he said his name. No, oh, I haven't okay. seen him in, in, in our, in the Chronicles for a little while for obvious reasons. Sure. I would no, I, I get that. that. You don't, if Brad just Brought the devil himself to show up in this chat. I'm going to be upset with you, Brad. Thank you, Stephen B. Thank you, Steve. Much appreciated. But um, yeah. So let's talk about some some other names, man. Um, what about some of the catchers? You know, you know, we already know about Austin Wells, right? He's mm -hmm. he's he's going to be the guy, right? What about um, like for me personally, um, Nervaez has kind of caught my attention. Ascara. Uh, ben Rice has shown some potential. I mean, which how about our catching crop? Like, there we got Yankees have a an influx of catchers. They have like what five catchers total? Five on the forty man, but there's five more. The 40, in the system. Yeah. like you just mentioned, Rice is not in the forty man. Neither is Ascara, and there's other like Anthony Siegler. We we've, we've had him forever. He's a guy that wouldn't surprise me that if he shot up at some point he's he's more i don't know what they're doing with him because they played him i think in the outfield last year there's mm -hmm. a couple other names that for some reason i'm blanking on their names but we drafted them years ago but not ramirez is one of those guys that's coming up he's got he's got potential oh even Rortvet, yeah august even Rortvet yeah. was like a decent prospect at one point so we're, we're flushed with catchers and one of them is going to move i think rice will eventually move the first base um but Ramirez is a guy that if Wells doesn't work out, at least behind the play, I think his bat's going to be great. I just – we'll see. I think so far he's passed all the tests of being a good catcher. But if he does struggle behind the plate like Sanchez did, I'm hoping that doesn't happen, then Ramirez is probably the guy that could be that catcher of the future because we only have Trevino for two more years. So if they're going to go platoon with Wells and Ramirez, that might be what they end up doing because Ramirez has got some really good stuff. But they DH'd him yesterday, which kind of surprised me, and they put Rice behind the plate. So I'm wondering what they're doing there. But we have a lot of catchers, like a lot. And that might be our deepest position outside of uh, the, the 800 infielders. Like it'd probably be shortstop or infield, catcher, and outfielders. We're deep at those positions. First base is the position that we are not deep at, like by any means. We are very, very weak at first, but – Catcher, we're really loaded, which is a good sign. Yeah, they um, yeah, first first base is a little bit of a weakness, no doubt. Are uh, the ca the catchers though? Yeah, I've been. I mean, they, they have a lot of catchers in their system, and I'm hoping. Um, I'm I'm hoping. I know not all of them are going to make it to Caputo's point. I mean, they're going to have to eventually trade their prospects. I mean, you can't keep all of them. Absolutely, Caputo. Um. You know, I've I've been look. I'll admit, I, I've been against trading certain names, certain prospects. I understand that they're not going to all make it to the Yankees, and um, you know, most of them. There's only a few of them that make it. A lot of them do end up moving on, whether it's they they get DFA or they get traded. But um, they'll definitely keep some of these guys. Who who knows? But I to me, there's uh, certain untouchables, but. You know, we'll see what happens. But as far as these catchers go, who do you see them keeping, or who do you see getting traded? If you, if 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 you were, I mean, out of the prospects, if you had to guess, yeah, if you had to guess, I don't expect you to know, but if probably Nervaez. 
Nervias. Probably okay. Nervias. And Josh Bro is the other name that I was thinking of. He's another mm-hmm. guy that was once one of our top pro- – not top, but he was like a top 30, I think. Um, probably Nervias because I just don't see where he fits. If if Wells turns out to be the players, the player we think he's going to be and Ramirez is another one. Rortvet should go. Um, there's just really no need for him at this point mm-hmm. unless Trevino's hurt. But yeah, probably Nervaez and Rortvet, and then we'd still have three catchers on the 40, man. So I think those two are the most likely. And if they had to, Ben Rice, I guess, if someone's interested in that bat being at the major league level quickly, but he'd probably be the third on that list. I don't I don't see us trading Wells. I don't yeah, see no. us trading Ramirez, unless it was for like a good – Ramirez could have been involved in a Dylan. He steals. What's up? What's up, TC? I think, yeah, I think Ramirez could have been involved in a Dylan Cease trade, but obviously that we're not going to make that happen anymore. So, but yeah, I don't think they're going to move Ramirez, and I think Wells might be untouchable at this point. Yeah, do you see, uh, do you see Ben Rice potentially being involved in a trade, or do you think the Yankees will use him? Because he's, it's kind of an interesting situation with him. I feel like he's that one name. I'm just, I'm not. I could see the Yankees. Uh, playing him but you know you also have spencer jones who could also play first base and ben rice could play first base so i don't know it's it's kind of a unique it's kind of a unique situation with ben rice like he's 25 you know they kind of got i think he's 25 right he's 24 25 they got to call him up soon you know his bat's ready he's got a great bat but it's just trying to figure out his his position because if he's the catcher he's not going to be here over wells or Trevino in the next two years. And I think Ramirez is the better catcher. So I'm, that's why I think they're going to try him at first base this year. But the fact that he was catching the the breakout game, maybe they don't want him to play first. I really – I don't know where he fits on this team because his bat could come up. He's kind of like Austin Wells because he was a bat-ready player last year. They just mm-hmm. needed his defense to catch up, and it did. So if Ben Rice has that same ascension, it wouldn't surprise me if – Maybe we see him this year. You know, if his bat is that good, he's got his lefty pop. You find a spot for that. Maybe there's an injury, a DH spot opens up, or a first base opens up. They can try him out. Ben Rice should get a look this year if they need the offense. He's his bat is ready. It's just figuring out where to play him. Yeah, that's the one guy that I I, I was like, where does he play? Like, where do you do you play him at catcher? Do you play him at first base? I mean, he could play both positions. But I'm saying, where does he fit in, into the puzzle, right? Because um, yeah. I talked with Dane Huber a little bit about Ben Rice, and I asked him if he thinks that Ben Rice could be a trade piece, and he said yes, uh, just because you know they, of, of the other catchers that they have in their in their in their on their team right now. So I like Ben Rice, but I mean, you know, he's 20. And to, to answer your question, he is 25. He just turned 25 um, last okay. month. So he he's one of those guys that yeah you do have to bring him up then if you know he's at that age now he's he's ready it seems it looks like right so can he be that third catcher I mean I I you know Rortvet I I don't see him on the Yankees personally but uh, I don't know where where Rortvet fits but can can uh, can Ben Rice or or uh, yeah, sorry. But can Ben Rice be called up if, you know, if either Trevino or Wells gets hurt? You know, if that is that a. Is I that could a see that. Yeah, I could definitely see that because I just don't. I don't think there's a spot for Ward Vet. He's a defensive first catcher. We already have that with Trevino. Mm-hmm. I think if if there's something up with one of our catchers this year, I would much rather get Ben Rice up here than Ward Vet because I mm-hmm. want the bat. I don't want two defensive catchers because we had that last year with Higgy and Rortvet right. and Trevino when he, before he got hurt. So we need offense everywhere we can get it, especially with the pitching concerns right now. Um, I would rather have Ben Rice's bat. I don't think Rortvet's got a spot anymore, and I think there is a lane for him to play. I don't like the fact that I'm using the word lane. I sound like Brian Cashman now, but <laughs> – um, I, I, I think at the end of the – I think ultimately – He's probably he's probably going to be a trade piece if they make a move for a pitcher. He can probably be involved in that, but there's certainly a spot to get him here because that bat, like I said, that bat is ready. 
he's he's got a really good swing that's going to play well at Yankee Stadium. So it's up to them where they put him, whether catcher, maybe he plays first and catches on occasion. In an emergency situation, he could be a DH. I don't want Soto DHing. I know people have brought that up. He's he's DH seven times last year. He does not need to DH, especially if you extend him. You're not extending a 26 year old to DH. No and, way. Yeah, Roy, no. Yeah, Roy Fett with no options. That's that's why I think they got to move him. Right. They got absolutely. Move him. And uh, TC was asking you about uh, Brock Selvage. He came in a little late, so um, if you wanted to fantastic. let him let him know, yeah. So you see, yeah, I he, said it. He's my favorite prospect, favorite yep. pitching prospect. Well, there you I love the kid. I think he's gonna be freaking. I think he's gonna be really freaking good. He is probably like my untouchable pitcher with Lalonde. You know, the other ones, I think you can move them. It's so hard to find good lefty prospects, and I think him and Lalonde are gonna be special. Brock Selvage is, he's he's looking really good, and I'm so happy because on Dane's show and with Carlos, we had the What's round up, table. Damian? What's going on, Damian? Buddy? What's up? And we talked about who we wanted to see start the the spring game. We did our rosters, and I said I want to see Brock Selvage start the game. He was my pick, and I'm so happy they picked him to start that game. And he looked phenomenal. So I'm really, really excited for him, TC. So I'm glad you brought him up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So cool, cool. There, there you go. There you go. And Caputo asked a question earlier if uh, you like Brandon Maia. We'll see what he does. He just signed, I think, like last year. He's still very, very young. Um, he's one of the he, – we're deep at outfield too. There's him. There's Valorio. There's John Cruz. There, obviously, there's Dominguez and Jones. We know about them. But we have a lot of outfielders too. Pereira, who just got option to AAA. I yep. don't know where he fits. Pereira? Where does he fit? In it? No, um, my, I think Pereira is going to get traded. But I'm yeah. saying Maia, where does he fit? Because if, if, if it all works out the way the Yankees want, it's Dominguez, Jones – Judge Soto, right? Or even if it's jo and Jones does a hybrid role of first and center field, where's my A factor in the next couple of years? Because Valorio is probably better than him. And then there's still, uh, I just said his name, John Cruz, another big bat. So mm -hmm. where does my A fit? Yeah. And this is where Caputo is saying uh, my A doesn't fit. So um then he goes on to saying that the only positive thing they say about him is that he's got lightning speed like ricky henderson so that's about yeah that's that's a that's a night that's that's a good thing but to your point you, you know where do you where do you play him you know they they have yankees have a lot of outfielders right so um I don't know. It's 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 a good problem to have. It's a good problem that the Yankees have these good problems, right? They have these problems, but um, but he could be your trade piece, like the Sarge, old Sarge said. You know, Maya is your trade piece, and I I agree. He I think he can be a trade piece along with guys like Rourke Beck, along with uh, Pereira. I think some of these guys are you know players that could get moved. Um, Peraza. At this point, I don't know. I don't know that he gets moved. And even if the Yankees tried, I don't know who would want him. Yeah, he'd be a throw-in at this point. Yeah, he probably like would he be. He could have been if he was healthy. Mm -hmm. you, you could have seen him involved in a, a trade for a guy like Cease, but he wouldn't have been the main piece. You know, and he could have been that two years ago. Or even last year before the season started, he could have been that. Uh, a big trade chip for a, for a rebuilding team. Had they maybe gone into last year and tried to get Dylan Cease from the White Sox, they could have had a pretty big package to get him surrounding with Peraza and other the other kids. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, they, they missed an opportunity for Peraza. And it's a shame, but he's a throw-in at this point. Yeah. Un yeah, unfortunately, man, they, they, um, they killed his value, you know. But – yeah, I mean, we we could talk about that all day, but and it will, it'll never end. But uh, yeah, and you know, and other names that I, I wanted to get your thoughts on, on like you know, on uh, on Rumfield. What do you what do you what do you think about him? I was keeping my eye on him because, like I said earlier, first base is so weak in our system. We that, need yeah. someone to step up. I, I don't know if they're going to move Jones to first. Um, but that might be the only way he gets like legit playing time. Cause if we do resign Soto, where's Jones playing? Where's Dominguez playing? Where's judge? Where's Soto going? 
and you still have Stanton. So if Rumfield can kind of take that take that ball and run with it, he looked great yesterday. That's for sure. And he had a pretty solid year last year. So it's just a matter of does he take that next step? Um, I don't think he's made it to AAA yet, so maybe that'll be the the real test for him this year is to master AA, get to AAA. He could have the inside track to be the first baseman because it's really him. You know, it's really mm-hmm. just him and maybe Ben Rice if they move him there and maybe Spencer Jones if they put him over there. So and I don't know why there's so much Stanton hate. He's been getting better lately. He hit a, what, what, 112 off the bat? He hit an absolute rocket yesterday. Yeah. His at-bats have been a whole lot better, which is what you want to see after a rough start to the spring. I mean, do you not want to see the guy improve? I get it. Like, he, he's making a lot of money and he's been hurt. I understand that, but mm-hmm. he's been hitting. He's been hitting better than a lot of other people lately. I've been hitting better than Soto lately, and no one wants to talk about that because it's just spring training, right? But Stanton has actually been – pretty good as of late so i'm hoping that carries over yeah as far as um i mean as far as stanton goes i mean it, yeah he he hit one home run and he's he's been looking better at the at the plate as far as the swing goes i mean he's looking a lot better and i think james rosen has done a good job with him um and like you said soto hasn't really been performing but you know personally i'm not going to stress that I'm I'm personally not going to stress it because it's it's spring training. This is yeah. it's, they're just ex- exhibition games. Yeah, we want to see how these guys develop, how they perform. We get a preview, but I don't think we should overreact to things because you know how us fans, how Yankees fans, <laughs> they like to overreact to things. So um, you know, just wanted to throw that out there. But um, you know, Caputo brings up. I wanted to talk about this real quick. He brought up how Davy Garcia and Floriel were busts, and they hyped those guys up hard. What do you that think? That was their fault. That was that, the that was Yankees' fault. fault. Yeah, that was Yankees' fault. I think Floriel could he could have been something. He yeah. could have been something, but they they kind of did him a little dirty at the like kind of like they did Andujar. You know, kind of like what they did with Peraza. Bring uh, bring him up, send him back down. Bring him up, send him back down. Because I wanted to see Floriel. I wanted to see more of Floriel, but we we didn't, you know. And he was great in the outfield. He had good speed. His bat had potential, but we just couldn't see him play. Unfortunately, it was just another one of those things where they 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 didn't let him develop the way he should have. You know, um, what what do you think? He's another one that should have been called up last mm-hmm. year. The second judge, he should have been called up. He should have been given a job at on opening day. I'll say that. He fell back into your lap. You DFA'd him. Mm-hmm. They DFA'd him for Franchi Cordero, by the way. And then no one picked him up. <laughs> and then he has an absolutely insane season in Scranton. He was too good for Scranton. Yeah, and the Yankees were perfect. trotting out Willie Calhoun. The, the Fantastic Four, you that's your term, the Fantastic Four. Yeah. We were rolling out there every goddamn day, and <laughs> they didn't give Floreal a shot until it was like the last two months, and it just made no sense. When Judge got hurt and they called up Billy McKinney, I said, what did Floreal do? Does he have some dirt? Like, th- Did he say something about Cashman's wife? Did he say something about Boone? <laughs> what did he do? To do that because he was a top prospect too. He was at the Futures game in 2017. I went to that game in Miami and he was there. He was one of the Yankees' top prospects and he was very young at that point. Still was when they first called him up in 2020, 2021, 2022. And then last year in a small sample size, he actually played okay. Wasn't great, wasn't terrible, but he was pretty good. And they ended up getting something for him and Cody Morris, but man, the fact that he wasn't given a shot over those bums last year, it made me really <laughs> wonder what, the, what he did wrong. I guess they know something that we don't, that that's, <laughs> that that's about the only response I could give you really, man. Um, and then just to switch it up briefly, TC's TC Stills is asking, uh, is Volpe closer to hitting leadoff? I personally think no. I don't think he's close yet. But w- how do you? What do you think? Oh man, he's killing it again in spring, isn't he? Uh, it's like he last is. year. Yeah. 
I still think they should keep him at the bottom of the order. Um, yeah, just keep same. him there. Uh, I, I'm assuming DJ is going to be healthy by opening day. Um, so the top three won't change. The middle of the order is Rizzo, Torres, Stanton. That's fine. Anywhere from that seven through nine, you keep him there. Um, because I think that's where he's going to be able to really keep up what he's doing in the spring and let that carry over. Cause it's a big jump to go from having a really good spring to then lead off opening day in Houston. That's a big jump. And I don't want to see him fall into those habits he did last year. Cause he, he, he was going from batting ninth to batting seventh to batting first. It's, it's too, it was too much change. And I think for now you keep him at the bottom of the order. What's up D and, you just you let him you let him stay there, and if that's where he starts to hit, and and you keep him there, there's no need for it. Yeah, no doubt. I that that was my thing with Volpe. I would only want to lead him off if his bat improves, and if he can show that this season, and if he could show that next season, because I want to I want to see you know two years where he's you know killing it, then maybe you have him at the leadoff spot, which I, I would love to have him at leadoff. You know, get him, get him on base, and he could steal. You know that yeah. he's he's perfect for the leadoff spot. It's just his his bat just needs to improve. Yeah. So you know, hopefully, hopefully that goes up significantly uh, this season. He's been killing it, killing it in in spring training, but um, you know, we'll see when the when the season begins. I mean, we're eleven days out. You know, eleven days out from the regular season where it's coming up fast. So. Um, hopefully you're all as excited as I am. Hopefully you're excited too, Rob. Not even the cold injuries dampen my excitement for. Oh reason. yeah, yeah. Not me. Not me either, man. I'm not. I'm not. I'm. I'm keeping a cool, calm, and collected on. You know, for me personally. So, cold Italian pizza is asking. So, bar, barring a trade or signing, has Gil or excuse me, Hill earned a number five spot in the rotation? He's been really good this spring. I think he gets it. You know, um, I don't know, you know, honestly, I do not know that the Yankees trade for another pitcher or sign for another pitcher. I, I, I'm not, I'm not seeing it. Thoughts? Unless it was Dylan Cease, uh, maybe they signed Lorenzen. He's been brought up just to give mm -hmm. you some innings, a major league ready pitcher. Yep. I don't know what the hell Blake Snell's doing. Two days ago, it seemed like he was a lock to go to Houston. Now they may have backed out of it. I don't know well, where he's pitching. So apparently with Snell, he he was looking for a, a, a two-year $66 million deal, and he wanted to knock out after. No? Huh? Houston said no? I, apparently Houston was like, eh, let's, let's pump the brakes because he wanted an opt-out after year one. But, you know, that's $33 million. Yeah, I, but I don't I don't know why. So okay. So actually to your to your point to what you how you responded. Houston should be like all over it because they're freaking starting rotation. Forget our starting rotation. They got I mean, four starters hurt. They got they got guys that are hurt, you know. So they should be they should ha have a sense of urgency right now. They should. I mean, yeah. look, I know that they would go past the threshold, but if you get Snell, I hate the fact that this is like it's working out for Houston, even though they're not, but. I don't like the Astros. I don't even know what I'm trying to say. They should be doing this because it won't hinder them from re-signing their guys next year. They still have to re-sign Tucker in two years. For one year of Snell, you do that because you don't. You have so many injuries. Verlander, um, who else? I think is Garcia the other one that's hurt. McCullers yeah, is still or, hurt. Or Katie, or Katie, if that if I'm or, Ka or Katie and Valdez. I think Valdez. I think yeah. Garcia starting opening day for them. I'm not sure. I got to look that up again. But I know right. they have like a. A entire rotation worth of injuries right now. You you get Snell, he'll most likely opt out unless he's terrible, which I don't see him being terrible. I, I mean, if you if he wants a one year with an opt out or a two year with an opt out after one, yeah, you sign up for that if you're the Astros because you can afford it. You can because Verlander's gone this year, and then he'll most likely opt out, and they won't they won't hinder them from uh, extending Kyle Tucker. Which that's the thing that most people are worried about. Him and Bregman, mm -hmm. Tucker in two years, Bregman after this year, they got to extend one of them. They've already extended, I think, Jordan Alvarez and Altuve. But yeah, I'm very surprised Houston backed out of that because mm -hmm. I would think the Yankees should be on that. If that opportunity, if that offer came to the Yankees, 
I don't care about the tax. I don't know if the Yankees do. I personally don't give a crap about it. If they if they come to the Yankees saying, would you do two for 66? I would hope they do it. But that's yeah. another conversation. Right. That is another conversation. You know, um, I, I think, you know, for one year, right, let, let's just say if, if it was the Yankees who signed Snell, let's just say if it was for that two-year 66, maybe for just that one year they bite the bullet. You know, and they they they're already over the t- tax threshold. So it's just for you know for one year, they bite the bullet, sign them, right, and let them opt out. And the Yankees have a lot of money coming off the books anyway uh, after this season. So you know, one year, I don't see why not. But you know, pitching man, it, it's it's a it's a premium right now. You know, it, it, re- it really is. Pitching is at, a, is at a premium. And as much as we don't like Scott Boris and his ways, I mean, he's kind of played it well, you know, because now you're looking at teams and their starting pitchers are, are starting to – they're they're, hurt, they're hurting. They're getting injured, you know, in one way or another, whether it's a elbow, hamstring, whatever the case may be. Now it, it's just like, you know, you know, Scott Boris is like, all right, well – it's my time now. Like these guys, these guys have uh, players that are hurt. I got, I got uh, players that they need, but I, th- I think they understand now that nobody's going to give Blake Snell or Jordan Montgomery for that matter. Nobody's going to give them the seven years or nine years that they're looking for. They're going to have to take short-term deals. So, yeah. um, you know, as far as the pitching injuries go, um, you know, I know Garrett Cole is hurt and he's going to be out you know, a few months, but you know, it could be worse for the Yankees starting rotation. That's all I'm going to say. You know, it could be a lot worse, you know, they, they, cause other teams have multiple pitchers that are hurt, but I, I don't know. I, I don't know if the Yankees go back and talk with Boris again about Snell or I, to me, I think that ship has sailed at this point. I, I don't know. If, I don't, I don't, I don't think, I don't think it happens. So, but that's just me. But, you know, I don't know how everybody else feels at this point. Um, let's talk about Spencer Jones, man. I want to, you know, we wanted to save him for last. Uh, you know, he came out yesterday guns blazing. You know, he hit two home runs. That's why, you know, yesterday I put out that tweet. I'm like, this is the guy that we wanted to trade for for Dylan Cease. Abs- I, no. I'm sorry, but no, I know some Yankees fans may disagree, but I don't trade him. But what did, what did you think? What, what do you think of Spencer Jones, man? Man, you're seeing probably like the same exact thing we saw. How quickly people forget that Dominguez was doing this last year in the spring too, right? Like he, mm-hmm. the dude hit like 450 with a 1500 OPS and Jones is doing that too. And it really does give you a good, a really, really good idea of what the work he put in this offseason and how it's translating to his game. I need to see it in the double A season and eventually triple A, because let's not forget Dominguez did struggle early last season in double A. Mm-hmm. But these adjustments that that Jones has made has been very, very good to see because he's not missing. He was swinging and missing a lot last year. He's barely doing that this year. I don't think he's he's swung and missed at like a couple of pitches, but he's seen a lot of pitches. He went like 90 something pitches without missing. That's a good sign. He's making more contact. He's making loud contact and he's sending that ball to the freaking moon. So, and he's fast. He beat out an infield grounder. So like there's reasons to be excited for this kid. I don't know when he'll be here. People think it'll be this year, most likely next season. Where they play him, I don't know because if Soto's back, it's hard to see him or Judge being a full time DH, especially when you still have Judge in his prime and Dominguez healthy. I don't know where Jones plays. Ideally, he'll be in center, but you could see him play a hybrid like Bellinger did in his early years with the Dodgers, first and center field. That could certainly be an option. But if if this keeps up, then he's going to be here. And he's going to be good. He's going to be really good. He's always had the tools to be really good. It's just about getting that strike, that swing and miss stuff down 
dropping that, dropping the strikeout rate, raising the contact a little bit, and everything else will fall into place. You've got a guy with plus speed, 40 stolen bags last year. He's clocked in time similar to Corbin Carroll, which is nuts because Corbin Carroll is as fast as freaking yeah. Wiley Coyote and Roadrunner, like the, or as the Roadrunner, not Wiley Coyote, but that's insane. <laughs> yeah. The tools yeah. are nuts, and he's got all those tools to be really good. I want to see him put that together this year in the minors. I'm not ready to say he's better than Dominguez yet. I know Mazza said that the other day on the show. Yep. I'm not ready to say that yet. I think he's got the tools to be really, really good. I'm excited for this. It's a first step in the work he put in. Um, but, yet yeah, it, we have every reason to be excited for the kid. Absolutely. And, David Conti, thank you so much, man, and uh, much appreciated. Thank you. 78 years old? Keep going, man. Keep going. You're not as That's... old as Sunil, so, yeah, you're great. You're, <laughs> great. you're, in, you're in the prime, prime of your life. Sunil's yeah, got you by, like, your life, sir. a thousand years. <laughs> Uh, I was expecting to say something about <laughs> Sunil's age. Oh, God. He's not any, even in the chat. Watch. He's going to come up now since you've mentioned his name. But, no, I, I like what I'm seeing from uh, from from Spencer Jones. I, I mean, guy's amazing. But as far as where he plays, you know, I, I could see him. I don't think he gets uh, brought up this year. I, I, I doubt it. I know some people think that he, he will, but I don't I don't think so. I don't think so personally, but um, maybe he, when he does get brought up, maybe between him and, uh, and judge, right. I could see judge playing some DH and Spencer Jones playing the outfield. Cause you got to remember judge, right. I'm not saying he's old, but he's getting up there, right. He's going to, yeah. Um, there, and, and the toe, right. The, apparently that's going to be a forever thing. That's at least that's what I heard, but judge is 32 years old. So, you know, as when he gets to about that 34, 35, I don't know that he's going to be able to play the outfield like he used to. He'll be able to, but maybe switching him off with, um, with Spencer Jones, that could, that could be a thing where judge could play more of that DH. You know, it's not like you're, he's going to be sitting. He'll probably sit some games maybe. But he'll get more of that DH role. I could see him fulfilling that DH role, kind of like what Stanton's doing. But he'll be he'll be better, right? Yeah. That that's the so I can see something like that happening. And Spencer Jones could you know still play first base um, when when needed. So maybe because I envision an outfield with um, you know with Joe or uh, sorry with Soto. Dominguez and and uh and Jones yeah and then you have your you have your first baseman and you know and, and again you have judge at DH so it's like you have those guys you have those four guys I mean can you can you see that what I think the best route to take right now is mm -hmm. this won't start till 2025 no we're not seeing Jones this year unless something goes catastrophically wrong and right. the Yankees are out of it they they have a sixty they're like a sixty win team you know like or at, at the end of the year and whatever but we've traded Soto we've traded everybody away that we can trade and it's a complete disaster it's the only way we see Spencer Jones what right. I think that's a, and Stephen is exactly what I'm about to say Jones will be a hybrid should be a hybrid like Cody Bellinger was in L A first year he played a lot of first base then his second year. He played a lot of outfield and first base. He did both, and he did both very well. And mm -hmm. I think Bellinger is more of a comparison to Jones than Jones is to Judge. I don't like that comparison of Jones to Judge because they're not the same player. They're just they're just tall. Um, I I think that you can see that. And then when Stanton's off the books, whether that's after two years or three years, whatever. But you have four years of Stanton. But starting in 2025, you'll have three years. At that point, Judge will be 36 years old, and mm -hmm. he'll have a few years left of his contract. You can DH him. If you re-sign Soto, he's in right. Jones is in center from that point on, and Dominguez is in left. And at that point, it could be Rumfield. It could be Ben Rice. It could be any prospect, possibly, that makes the switch to first base. They don't have to worry about that for three years. That's why I've been mentioning so many times Mazza's article from months ago 
where he wrote about the Yankees doing this to find a spot for Spencer Jones because they're not cutting Stanton if he's owed $90 million. If Stanton has a 30 home run season, it's hard to envision the Yankees just eating the money and saying, go. If he's hurt again and catastrophically bad, maybe. But if he just hits 30 bombs like he did two years ago, I don't see that happening. Um, so you have Stanton, you have Judge, you hopefully have Soto back next year. Dominguez is healthy and Jones will be ready. You have to put them all in the lineup at some point mm -hmm. in some capacity. So if that means Jones has to play a little first base and be a hybrid, so be it. Because in three years after 2025, when Stanton's gone and Judge is 36 years old, Jones can play center. And Jones is going to be, what, 25 at that point, 26 years old? It's not like he's going to be in his 30s. You still have a good 10 years of Spencer Jones being an outfielder. It kind of works out that way. That's the best route I see them taking because of Stanton's contract having so much money attached to it. If he was in the last year or two of his deal, they'd probably cut him and we wouldn't be worrying about this. But the fact that he's owed so much and if, if they cut him, the Marlins don't have to pay anymore and it all comes back to the Yankees, that's why I don't see them doing that. So it kind of aligns perfectly. Judge's age, Stanton's contract, Jones doing the hybrid thing for three years, and then you make him center fielder. And in those three years, I think Dominguez can handle center field just fine. And you can have Judge or Soto play left. Yeah, uh, I, I no, I like it. I like it a lot. And with that outfield, that's a that's a young outfield right there. Uh, you know, good good outfielders, and then good at the plate. I mean, man, you can't you cannot go wrong. They can't possibly mess that up. I mean, ho hopefully they don't, but you never know. But I, it's just they have such talent right that right now that they are like set. They're built. They're building for the future, right? Um. You know, as far as John Carlos Stanton goes, I mean, look, this is this is going to be a make or break year for him. You know, I, I I think this is a make or break. Some fans think that if he doesn't play well, the Yankees are going to cut him. But to cut ninety million dollars or to eat that ninety million dollars, I I don't know. I, I don't see it happening. I could see them benching him maybe, and just letting him play on occasion. I could you know kind of that Jacoby Ellsbury treatment. Um, I, I could see that. And then, you know, when he has about, you know, two or three years left on his contract, because he has what, four? Yeah, he's got four years left. Four years. So maybe in 2026, they cut him. But who knows? I, I you know, it, it's a, I think it's a matter of how he plays this year. But I don't see him, even if he has a bad year, I, I, don't, I don't see him getting cut. I see him getting benched more or less. I think that's, what's going to happen. They're just going to sit him, you know? Um, but some fans think that he's going to, that the, the Yankees will probably just eat his contract if he plays bad this year. I mean, if he gets hurt again, yeah, it, it could be an Ellsbury situation where he is forced to retire or just goes into like hiding. Cause I don't know what the hell happened to Ellsbury after 2018. Like, he was just gone. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, he was there in 2017, and then the next three years of his contract, we just he was constantly hurt, and there was new injuries. So, mm -hmm. if he's hurt again, and he just he, maybe he just says, "I can't do this no more," you know, and he retires, but he's still only going to be what 34, 35. It's not like he's 40 years old. So, I mean, that would mean his body really just broke down on him, which is an absolute shame because he had all the tools to be one of the better power hitters in the in the game of all time. So. It is it is a shame with the injury done to him, but if if he's hurt again this year and really really bad, the Yankees might not have a choice. So I get it. It is it is hard to see them eating ninety million though. That's the only reason I say they won't do it. They didn't want to do it for Donaldson for one year, and they knew he was bad. They didn't want to do it for Hicks, and he was owed thirty million for three. They're still paying for those two guys this year. Well, I don't know why that would they really pay ninety million for three years of Stanton. I'm, I'm hoping obviously the best case scenario, Stanton has a, yeah, a big year just as he gets older, just find a way to hit homers. That's all I need him to do. I don't care if you hit 220, but give me 30 or 30, give me 30 or more home runs, drive in 75 or more RBIs. Like he did a couple of years ago when he was an all-star. I think if you get that from Stanton, you're going to be fine with that. As long as he's healthy, as long as he's healthy, I don't think we're going to have to worry about his bat. 
Yeah, health health is the biggest factor here. I mean, it's not just with Stanton, the whole the whole team. You know, the, it, health is going to be huge, and hopefully the, these all these guys can stay healthy and stay on the field and play. Uh, check out this comment right here. Uh, he says, uh, let me be devil's advocate. This is assuming Spencer Jones developing the way we think he will develop. Just a reminder, we thought Clint Frazier and Greg Bird was a superstar, and he didn't do much. But I, I I don't know. I think Spencer Jones is of a different caliber. I think he's – yeah, I understand where he's where Davey's coming from, you know, because they, they didn't handle uh, Greg Bird and uh, Clint Frazier. They, they didn't handle those guys well at all. So – Bird was hurt yeah. all the time. Bird was hurt all the time, absolutely. And Frazier, he had that – didn't he, he have that concussion? And he was just never able to recover, right? Yeah, he so, was great in 2020. Yeah. Like he won a he was a gold glove nominee for some reason. And then it just fell off. And he's another prospect they missed a chance to move when they could have. They could have had Garrett Cole two years earlier, but yeah, it was the, the injury. Yeah, so old Sarge is right. Um right here. Frazier was yeah. a bust, turned out to be a bust, but you know, concussions are certainly not a good thing to go through. Um and also let's not forget the Yankees. They they didn't do him any favors early on as well. They called him up in 2017, hit a home run his first game, sent him down like a few days later. Yeah. And it was like that for him up until 2020 or 2019 where they finally gave him actual playing time because everyone was hurt. So injuries played a factor into Frazier's downfall, but Bird for sure, the injuries, is the, he couldn't stay on the field. And the yeah, same no. thing for Andujar, exactly, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Yeah, these guys were getting hurt, you know, left and right, and value went down, and they just never. We just never got to see them develop the way we would we 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 had hoped. And yeah, CWE. Yeah, remember when the Yankees wouldn't trade Clint Frazier for Cole? Trust me, we've we've talked about it many times. Um, yeah, that was that was yeah, not a not a good move. And uh, what's up, Jeffy? How you doing? Uh, the Yankees could sign one of those pitchers. They could, but they should. They should. <laughs> I'm gonna say but, that they should. They should. Are they going to? Probably not. The way the way it's going, I think. Um, I think right now with the with the Yankees, with 11 days left, I think they're gonna start making their moves, start making their cuts, send players whoever they need to send to AAA, um, and and start forming their 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 roster. And, um, you know, I'm more curious to see who that, who their number five is going to be in that starting rotation. Um, it, it's got to be one of the guys from within. It's got to be, it's, it's got to be in, um, like a Luis Hill or I, I don't want Luke Weaver personally, but I, I could see no. Luis Hill being number five. I think ideally Heel would get some innings under his belt in AAA because he is coming back from the injury, but, He's looked so good. Yeah. He's been probably the best starter in the spring overall. I mean, he's been better than Rodon. He was better than Nestor. He's better than Schmidt, better mm -hmm. than Stroman. I don't see how you don't give him the spot. Um, his changeup is really good. He's yeah. really been working on that changeup. Plus, yeah. he's still he you can tell the guy's healthy because he's hitting 100 on the gun. So the arm's good. The arm's mm -hmm. the arm's fine. I think he gets it. Um if the Cole injury never happened, I don't think he would have made the team and they put him in Scranton. He'd build up some innings, which is fine. But right now, unless they make a signing in the next 11 days, which doesn't seem likely, I think he's got it. He's earned it for sure. He's absolutely earned it. So I'm happy for him because this was a kid that two years ago came up, pitched well, and then unfortunately got hurt much like a lot of our players do, but he's worked his yeah. way back and, and op a door opened up. Unfortunately, it was the, worst possible scenario with Garrett Cole going down, but the door opened up and he's absolutely answering the call. So I'm very happy for him. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm loving what I'm seeing from Luis Hill, man. He's, he's, uh, he's good. He's got some good stuff. I was worried about him. You know, I always worried about a pitcher when they come back from like uh, TJS from Tommy yeah. John surgery, you know, you just don't know how, how they're going to perform, but he's looked good in the spring, you know, hopefully that shows in the, in the, in the regular season as well. And Caputo, yeah, we I've seen Yamamoto. 
Um, I, and like you, man, I don't take spring training serious. Yes, he's looked awful, but, you know, we'll see what happens when the regular season comes around. Uh, you know, that's where the results are going to truly matter. And, you know, as far as the regular season goes, you don't know how you don't know how it all plays out. You you really don't. Um, you know, and I've said this many times, we we all thought that, you know, based on how the regular season played out in 2023, a lot of us thought it was going to be the Braves and the Orioles in the World Series. Surely was not the case. <laughs> we all saw who was in the World Series. We all saw who won the World Series. So, you know, you just don't know. You don't know how the season's going to play out. You really don't know. My only, my only concern um, with the Yankees right now, it's it's their pitching. It's honestly their their pitching, the rotation. Um, you know, for me personally, I do feel confident with um, with Radon, Stroman, and Schmidt. Uh, Nestor's the big question mark for me, but I hope Nestor can impress in that uh, season opener against the Astros uh, just because he does, you know, th this is a time for him to prove himself and show that, you know, he's 2022 Nesta Cortez, not 2023. And hopefully his shoulder holds up because, you know, yeah. shoulder injuries are, they're no joke. I mean, once you get a shoulder injury, because I've met people with shoulder who have uh, gotten surgery on their shoulder. It's just, unfortunately, it's not the same. I know he didn't get surgery, but, Still, shoulder injuries are just nothing to 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 mess with, but yeah, the pitching is a is a is a bit of a concern. We'll see how the bullpen shapes up. Um, there's a few good names there. I know you're big on Birdie. That's been yes. your guy, right? And he's looked good, no doubt. I I can't blame you for, um, for you know talking about Nick Birdie. But what do you what do you think, man? I mean, he's got some good stuff. Nick Birdie, Clayton Beater, Birdie uh, Beater, Santana. I just want to say this. Yamamoto is going to be good. I, I don't, people are calling yeah. the dude a bust because of spring training. I'm sorry. He's going to be good. I don't, I don't know if he's going to be ace. I don't know if he's going to be worth 326 million, but the dude's going to be good. His, his stuff is way too good. Um, but birdie, I just, for whatever reason, when we signed him to a minor league deal, I'm like, this guy's going to be Ian Hamilton. He's going to be the Ian Hamilton this year. He has, he has good stuff. It's just, he's had injury concerns and we haven't seen him. Um, and then we have Santana coming along who, again, yeah. when the Yankees sign these guys and the comments are always, Oh, world series back on or up. Oh, there's the cashman dumpster diving again. These are always the signings, at least two of them every year that turn out to be sneaky good. And now with two spots open up in the bullpen with Canely injured and Marinaccio is terrible. So yeah. Yeah. Birdie and Santana. They got it. They got to have the inside track, and he'll be the fifth starter. That's how it's probably aligning right now. I think the bullpen was figured out already for like six of the eight spots. It was just you had one, assuming Canley was healthy, but now you got two. So I think I think Birdie's really he's shown up, man. The dude's touching like triple hits on a sinker. That's nuts. That's that's right up Matt Blake's alley. So yeah, I, I agree. I think at this point, heel's got to have it. If it's not heel, it'll be. Weaver and I don't like that. And also Poteet is another Poteet, guy yes. that yeah. could make this team when he probably should make this team, but because he I don't know if Santana would take an assignment to AAA because he's on the 40 man. Poteet, same thing with Birdie. So they got to clear spots for those guys. Poteet, I, I don't know what they do. They they got a few pitchers that should make this team. Not enough spots to put them though. And don't don't trust Holmes. For now, we have no choice, right? Right, right. But we have guys that I think can take that spot from him. Yeah, I, I you know, you know what? I, I know, I know. A lot of people like to uh, bash Cashman, but you know, I'm not, I'm not one of those Cashman bashers. However, he does do, he does do a good job of finding arms. You know, uh, he does, he does an extremely good job of finding arms. I know some of these guys haven't, you know, looked good in, in spring training, but uh, once the regular season uh, comes around and these guys come out, they look great, you know. And Clay Holmes, like you, man, I don't want him to be the closer, but he's going to be the closer, right? Um, 
I do think that Clay Holmes is a good pitcher. I just don't know about the closer role. I'm not trusting him as a closer, but he's going to be the closer. But remember when he came, when he was traded uh, from Pittsburgh, he had a high five ERA and look at him now, you know, just abs- absolutely killing it. Um, but yeah, I, the, the, the pitching there, there's just some, uh, yeah, there's just some questions with that. And I do like Ferguson. He has the stuff to close. Yeah. Keenly, when healthy, has the stuff to close. Loizaga should, if not for the injuries, he should have been the closer because his stuff is disgusting. Just he can't stay on the field. So I'm hoping he's healthy this year. Um, I think Birdie's stuff is really good for a ninth inning role. Mm-hmm. Thing is, Clay Holmes might have the best stuff out of all those guys I just named. It's just with Clay Holmes, right. he, you can tell – from his first batter that what he, whether he's going to be good or not cuz he can make you look as foolish as you've ever looked at the plate swinging at absolutely filthy pitches and you're like this guy's got it today or he can throw four pitches that almost hit the people in the first row like a Roldis Chapman and he'll get into those <laughs> modes last year was for about a whole month of August he was absolutely terrible outside of August he was really good mm-hmm. really good the year before he was an all-star and he was getting comp- he was he did something that hadn't been done since Rivera. He had a consecutive sh- save streak and he was that good. And that was like 2 years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, that was 2016. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was that was that was an insane run that he had during that time. An insane run and I was and then something happened. I, I don't know what. Just fell apart. He so just fell apart. I think You can't have that with a closer. No, I think you can't. he got the stuff, you know, like that's the thing. Yeah. He's got the stuff. It's just he has those, he hits those walls. And like Chapman did, Chapman always had the stuff. It's just that he would hit those walls for like a good two, three week or longer period where you couldn't get anybody out and he was unusable. If Holmes can avoid that, he's going to be a really good closer. Is he going to be elite like a Devin Williams or, an, a, or a class A? Probably not, but... Mm-hmm. He's not going to be David Robertson. He's not – no one ever is going to be Mo. No. But Holmes has the stuff to be one of the better closers. I won't say the best, but one of the better closers in the sport. It's just that he hits that freaking wall like he, for a whole month, and that killed him last year. And the year before was the same thing. He was absolutely untouchable for the first half of that season. And then like the rest of the team in the second half, he fell apart. So if he can find a way to avoid – that wall because he'll hit the wall every relief pitcher does but if he can avoid the the month-long stretch where he's absolutely terrible he'll be a lot better this year and he was still really good last year so that's why I'm, I'm still holding out hope I'm not gonna end the you know the Holmes conversation right now he's our best option to close until someone else takes that job from him yeah I could I mean there, there could be somebody within the Yankees system that could over uh take over that closer role. Some, some folks in the chat were bringing up class a, but I think that's going to cost a lot for, to get him. I like class a, don't get me wrong. I like class a, but I, I don't know how much the Yankees are willing to give up for him. And I know the guardians will ask for a bunch and uh, Devin Williams was another name mentioned, but he got hurt. So he's going to be out a few months. Yeah. So, you know, again, I, 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 to what I said earlier, the, as far as the Yankees and their pitching, even though there's question marks, I'd rather have these question marks that the Yankees have right now as opposed to what other teams are dealing with. So, um, at, you know, at the moment, it's only Cole. and it, it, I don't want to say only Cole, but that's our ace, and he's going to be out a few months. But, you know, if the Yankees are are, are going to be a good team, this is the – this is the time for them to step up and show that they can do it even with uh, their ace being hurt. You know, it, it can't be this thing of like where, you know, when judge got hurt last year, the team just was lost, was absolutely lost. They looked, they didn't know any, they didn't know what they were doing, but I don't think that's the case this year. I think this team is better set up going into 2024 than 2023. No, I, I agree. On Caputo, who who was supposed to make a trade? The Dodgers and, and Cleveland? When was that reported? 
for Bieber and Klaus A. I don't, I don't remember seeing anything of that. <laughs> if that, if they didn't make that trade, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Dot the Dodgers trade away a lot of their uh, young talent. They trade away they a lot of their young players. System. They they have an amazing system, but they 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 trade a lot of their young talent for whatever reason. They need. I mean, I feel like they could be a better team if they just kept some of those guys. Honestly, but. You know, whatever. That's the Dodgers. They can do whatever yeah, they want. They're still loaded. <laughs> they're, oh, they're lo they're loaded. They're loaded. I'm not. I'm not denying that. But I'm. I'm just. I'm just saying. Um, Heel closing. I don't see. I've, I don't I've said this since day one. I don't yeah. want him to be a closer yet. Give him a chance to start before. I don't want to say demoting, but delegating him to the bullpen because he's looked fantastic, and now yeah, he's probably I the number five starter. Yeah, I would tread slowly on the whole. Let Luis Hill close. Let's. I, I'm 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 in agreement with you on that. Let's 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 wait on that. But um, we'll slowly go ahead and uh, wrap it up. Um, any final thoughts, man? Uh, um, anybody else come to mind as far as prospects and um, anything you want to say to the chat? Yeah, I want to uh, talk about. Jeffy's brought this up a couple of times uh, about Lorenzen. I think they should sign him. I know Lorenzen's not a sexy name. He's not going to give you a two point three ER. Not going to replace Garrett Cole by any means, but um, if you can just get another body, then do it. You know, because right now we're thin. Whether we like whether we like the kids or not, we're thin. Will Warren got beat up today. I don't know if he's ready yet. He will be soon. I don't want to put that pressure on him. Heel is coming back from injury. We got to be careful with him. The Yankees could use another starter, so I I do think they should still be in the market. Um. It's go in terms of prospects. I mean, we, we saw a little snippet of Arias yesterday. Uh, mm -hmm. He looked good defensively. We saw yep. that the flash of the shortstop. Lombards looked good during the spring and in that game yesterday as well. Um, that system's loaded, man. I'm just saying, look out for some of these FCL kids in the next couple of years. Absolutely. I think at this time next year, NFE will be coming back next March. Next March 17th, 2025, and we'll be talking about the Yankees' top pitching prospect, Brock Selvage, possibly. Um, we'll see if that's the case. Or maybe the top, maybe the second pitching prospect. I think Hampton will still be the top guy, but Warren and Beater will probably graduate from prospect status, and then Selvage could easily be that number two. Or Lalani, whichever. Could be the one, two, three, Hampton, Lalani, uh, Selvage. But the system's loaded, and we should be very excited for it, especially in the next couple of years. But they should still do whatever it takes to go win this year. This is an all-in season. It is an all-in season, absolutely. And I hope next year we're we're having this conversation about uh, Selvage and Lalani. Um, I really, I really do hope that. Um, as far as getting another pitcher, date, I, I, I think the Yankees are talking. I, apparently, they're interested in Lorenzen. And like you said, Lorenzen's not an attractive name. I don't, we don't need an attractive name exactly. We just want this. We want somebody that's going to help with the rotation, at least carry the rotation for the next few months till Cole comes back. And you don't need to sign Lorenz into a long term deal. He's only looking for a two year deal anyway. What that two year deal is, I don't know. But, um, uh, you know, what, as far as the money goes, well, you know, we'll see. Um, if the Yankees do roll with what they have, I could see them maybe making a move at the deadline. Yeah. Right. Uh, that for I'm, I'm, I'm sure for a pitcher at the, at, at this point, I don't know if it'll be a, a, a bullpen guy or a starter, but um, it's got to be, you know, it's definitely a pitcher. So we'll, you know, we'll, we'll see, we'll see what happens and we'll cross that bridge when it, when it happens. Right. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how, you know, everything plays out, you know, 11 days left till the regular season. Uh, I think, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm ready for it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm done with spring training, <laughs> you know, uh, but I'm ready for the regular season. Hopefully the Yankees come out swinging and uh, you know, all we, all we could do at this point is just wait. So yeah, that's all, that's all we can do. Um, but hopefully you guys had a good time. Uh, Rob, bro, thanks for coming on and doing this with me. Um, Good stuff, man. I, I loved. I wanted to hear your thoughts, and it looks like you, you know, you had some good, uh, some good reports going on there. Awesome, awesome job, guys. Um, you. If you haven't yet, 
Uh, please subscribe to Pinstripe Chronicles podcast. They're doing awesome things over there. They're, they do an amazing job over there. They're at 600 subscribers. They just hit 600. So congratulations again. Uh, give these guys some love. Um, and please subscribe to my channel if you guys haven't yet. It would greatly be appreciated. Hit that like button if you haven't yet. Um, share this out with anybody you know. And I will see you guys on Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I know you guys are going live tomorrow, right? 10 o'clock? Yep. Tats will be there. I'm, I'm assuming Uncle Tats will be there. You never know with Uncle Tats. He's a... He's, he's a strange old fella, but we love him. <laughs> and of course, Donald, Donald will be there. And uh, Donald and Lynn have been killing it every Sunday morning for the last few weeks. Um, for reasons I'm not going to get into, unfortunately, Chris had to step away. We yes. want to put all the well wishes out to Chris, but Absolutely. Lynn and Donald have been killing it. Absolutely. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Good job to everybody over there at the Pinstripe Chronicles podcast, you guys, and then the upper deck, um, you guys are just absolutely killing it. Um, you know, we'll see what other things Tats does with his, with, with shows, but, um, you know, it's uncle Tats. He just does things that he wants to do. Right. So, um, but yeah, thank you everybody for coming on Donnie, FL divers, Zachary fluster, uh, Michael Caputo, Jeffy, Stephen B called Italian pizza, uh, David Conti, CWE, Aiden, uh, Damian Serrano, I know you were in there at TC Steels. If I did not mention your name, I'm sorry, but if I didn't, but thank you for coming on. Hopefully you all had a good time. I had fun. I know Rob had a good time. So uh, till next time, folks, see you all later.